Flesh eating bacteria, that's a real thing. And the number of cases is rising. In fact, the CDC just issued a national health alert to warn about this specific bacteria that's causing these infections. And this bacteria is called Vibrio vulnificus. So during this past July and August, as we've had widespread heat waves and above average coastal sea temperatures, for example, in Connecticut, New York, and North Carolina, have actually reported more severe and fatal flesh-eating bacterial infections with at least five people having died in these three states alone. These bacteria, they reside in coastal waters and they proliferate in the warmer months, July, August, September when ocean temperatures are at their highest. This bacteria can take two different paths to wreak havoc in the human body. It's either gonna happen from the inside out or from the outside in. The inside out method occurs when someone becomes sick after eating raw or undercooked seafood, particularly shellfish. And by far the most common culprit is gonna be eating raw oysters. This bacteria is actually the leading cause of shellfish associated deaths in the United States. So raw oysters are risky because oysters are filter feeders and they concentrate these bacteria in very high numbers. So when you eat them, you're consuming large numbers of these dangerous bacteria, allowing for the infection to start out inside your gut, which initially causes a gastroenteritis picture with nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and upset stomach. After that, the infection can then spread into the bloodstream and cause the organs to shut down with eventual death in many cases. Now, what about the bacteria's outside in method of destruction? People can also get infected after they swim in the ocean with an open wound, such as if they have a recent piercing or if they got a tattoo recently, but even like a minor cut or a scrape, maybe you're at the beach and you have a little break in your skin when your leg or your foot uh, brushes up against the rock, you get a scrape that way. The bacteria end up invading that wound and it ends up causing a necrotizing fasciitis. Now necrotizing means dying, as in rotting away. And fasciitis, that refers to inflammation of the fascia. The fascia is the tough part that covers the muscle. Necrotizing fasciitis, it eats away at the skin, it eats away at the muscles and the nerves, and also in the fat and blood vessels around that infected wound. The infection rapidly spreads into the bloodstream and this can cause the body to go into shock, causing all the organs to fail with subsequent death. Certain people are more prone to developing more severe infection. So those with liver disease are actually considered to be at highest risk. Also, people with a condition called hemochromatosis are at particularly high risk because this bacteria does tend to really like high iron levels. Other conditions that are considered to be increased risk of having severe infection would include having underlying conditions such as cancer, diabetes, HIV, and other diseases that suppress the immune system. And for whatever reason, men are more likely to have severe infection compared with women. Overall, the fatality rate is about 25%. But even if you do survive, you might end up losing a limb in the process. That's how nasty this flesh-eating infection is. That's why necrotizing fasciitis is considered a surgical emergency. It's also why it's crucial to get IV antibiotics as soon as possible to increase the odds of survival and decrease the odds of having to get your limb amputated. Whenever there's a hurricane that comes along with a storm surge and the flooding, well, that can also lead to more of these infections. And that actually, that's what happened last year with Hurricane Ian in Florida. That ended up causing 38 cases of Vibrio infection with 11 of those people dying. So with these bacteria, besides loving iron, they also love salty water and they love warm temperatures. That's why most cases occur in the Gulf Coast during the summer and fall months. But as this earth gets warmer and warmer, we're seeing more and more cases and more and more cases occurring in more northern waters like in New York and Connecticut. Of the 200 Vibrio vulnificus cases that occur in the United States every year, about one in five people end up dying, sometimes within one or two days of getting sick. So it's a very fast, very progressive infection that can kill pretty quickly. Now, the only real way to avoid a Vibrio infection is to avoid exposure to the bacteria. So it's best to make sure that the seafood is well cooked and avoid raw or undercooked oysters or other shellfish 
and always wash hands after handling it raw, especially if those oysters come from very warm waters like from the Gulf Coast and also from Chesapeake Bay. In fact, Vibrio vulnificus can be isolated from virtually all oysters that have been harvested in the Chesapeake Bay and the United States Gulf Coast when the water temperatures exceed 20 degrees Celsius. Also, if you have a skin wound, it's best to stay out of the ocean and avoid brackish water or at least cover the wound with waterproof bandages and use bacitracin. If exposed to salt or brackish water, washing the hands and washing any cuts thoroughly with soap and water afterward. Especially because another common scenario where people can get infected actually occurs in the hands when people are handling these oysters, especially if they accidentally cut themselves in that process.